Hey folks, welcome back to Mirrors and Lab. In today's episode, I'm prepping for some upcoming electronics projects and I need to order some more capacitors. I remember what it was like when I first had to order caps and how confusing it was. There were so many different variables. Over the years, I've learned what some of that stuff means and I thought it would be neat to share some of what I've learned with you folks. So without further ado, let's dig right into how to order capacitors. In this video, we're going to be ordering parts from DigiKey. However, the information that we're covering would be useful for ordering parts from pretty much any of the other electronic suppliers out there too. Let's get started with why I like to order from DigiKey. First and foremost, it's probably really just the uh, the layout of the website is 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 pretty straightforward and organized as far as it, as as electronics websites can go. You know, they are pretty confusing. All of them, really, I find at least. And um, also, I really like the shipping from DigiKey. I find that it's pretty fast and it's pretty reliable and it's pretty affordable as well too. Generally, the shipping is uh, to where I live on the east coast of Canada. It's always like about $8 and they generally always use FedEx and it almost always only takes like two business days from the day that I order it. And if I order it on a Friday, often it, it, off, it will like arrive on a Monday as well too, which is really cool. Or if I order it, say like on a Tuesday, I'll get it like that following Thursday. And that is really useful because it allows me to sort of turn around projects really, really quickly. And I can always sort of rely on, uh, on how much the parts are going to cost and anticipate that and then just sort of work that into things as well too. If your order is over $100, then they even give you free shipping as well too. I also just want to mention that I'm not sponsored by DigiKey at all. I just uh, really like ordering from them. Okay, so here we are. We're on the DigiKey website. It's at digikey.ca. And uh, I suppose if you are somewhere else in the world, you might just type in digikey.com. But anyways, that is all what I type in to go to the website here in Canada. So we can find capacitors. Uh, if we go over here to the left side under products, you know, we don't need to go to view all because uh, capacitors are something that a lot of people order often. So we can just uh, go to the passives right here because that's what they are. They're a passive component. And uh, I'm not going to dig into like the theory behind like all of the, the, the what and the why behind all this, or at least I'm not going to get too deep into any of that in this video. You know, I'll, I'll just reserve that for future videos or for other uh, content that's already out there, like on Mr. Carlson's lab or like Uncle Doug's channel, for example. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's uh, go over here to capacitors and we'll just click on that. And that brings us to this screen here, which uh, shows us all the different types. And this is where I find it starts to get confusing right away. Because uh, I remember when I first wanted to order caps, I think it was like, like power supply caps or something like that. And I knew that they were like the big ones. Um, and they, I knew what they looked like. And they looked kind of like that, basically. But, uh, but they kind of looked like that as well, too. And sometimes they look kind of like that as well, too or even like that, and I, so I, I was really confused right away. But okay, so if you're working on guitar amplifiers, the kind of caps mostly that you're gonna be ordering are these ones right here, aluminum electrolytic capacitors. These are the kinds that are in the power supply of your guitar amplifier, and heck, they're actually the same caps that are in the power supply of like pretty much everything actually, like TVs and like like refrigerators, and like they're the ones that are in cars, like that's like, basically one of the most popular types of capacitors that have ever been used or made and that will probably always be used and made as long as we are making capacitors until we invent something even better. But anyways, that's the kind right there. <laughs> Aluminum electrolytic capacitors. The other type that we order um, would be under this category here, MICA and PTFE capacitors. And uh, we also sometimes order film capacitors as well too. And uh, sometimes tantalum or maybe these polymer ones down here um, and sometimes ceramic as well too. But really these, these ones right here are going to be the most and probably out of these ones, these aluminum electrolytic capacitors and film capacitors are going to be the ones that we are going to use probably the most in um, like guitar related electronics projects. Uh, these are the kind of caps you use in the power supplies and typically you would see these like attached to the cathodes um, and, uh, and tubes and the schematics like inside amplifiers as well too. And um, 
and other different places like in filtering and things like that as well. And then uh, you also see these film capacitors mostly in like filtering circuits and like and coupling and things like that. Um, you don't usually see film capacitors in power supplies. And that's because, uh, well, well, that's, that's way, way more into it than I want to get right now. But that's basically where you typically uh, use these types of caps and, uh, and uh, the ones that you use the most often. Okay, so let's just click here on the aluminum electrolytic capacitors. And that brings us to this screen. And boy, oh boy, is this... <laughs> this is where it starts to get pretty hectic here, eh? Okay, so here's what I do first to eliminate a lot of the results. Because right now we've got like 113,000 of them, okay? So first what we want to do is we want to click on in stock and then... Uh, that's going to narrow it down to like 20,000. So that's going to get rid of a lot of stuff right there. So let's just apply that. Okay, so now we've narrowed it down to 20,000. Okay, so I think that like there's, well, like look, let's look at all the different vari variables here because I, I mentioned earlier, that's what makes things confusing, right? So there's like manufacturer, there's the series, um, there's like the packaging type which is uh, sort of, okay, so like, well, let's talk about what these things are. Manufacturers, like who makes the capacitor? Series would be like, just like their internal sort of like, this is like the red label capacitors or the gold label ones, or, you know, like for different sort of classes or like quality levels of them. Um, packaging would be sort of how they are, well, how they're packaged and shipped to you because if you're using the parts, you might be wanting to like pull them out of a box or a bag one by one, or you might want to say like, if you were in a factory, have them installed in a machine that are on like a big reel or something like that. And then the machine can pick them off one by one in an automated process. And so you can order your parts in different sorts of ways. But the way that we would probably order them is in like bulk or box. But honestly, this isn't even really a, a, a variable I pay attention to until I narrow things down quite a bit more. So we'll just ignore it for now. And product status, uh, this is just, you know, like if you're looking for old parts or current parts, um, you might want to be looking for like, say like maybe certain capacitors that were only available a few years ago, or maybe you want to look for some that are discounted. Um, you might click on obsolete, but most of the time you're just going to look at active stuff. Uh, capacitance, this is an important one right here. This is the actual, like the capacitance of the capacitor right here. So this is like, say for a lot of power supply caps, we'll pick 22 microfarads right here. And say when we do that, it narrows it down a lot to 867 results, but we're just gonna keep it cleared for now. But, uh, but this is definitely a category that we're gonna have a look at quite a bit here later. And tolerance, now that's important, but we're not gonna have a look at it right now too much, but this is basically sort of an indicator on how rugged the capacitor is, you know, like, like how hot can it get, you know, and that's important to know because if you're running um, some circuits, you might need to run a lot of current through the capacitors and they might get pretty hot or you might use them in hot conditions or they might be inside of a part of the thing that you're fixing that gets close to something else that gets hot. And so they might need to handle a lot of heat or they might need to have a certain tolerance and not sort of fluctuate, you know, in their tolerance if they get hot or cold or, or whatever, you know. And then this is where you can sort of pick those sort of tolerance ranges that you want the parts to be within. Okay, here is the, uh, the voltage. Now, this is a very important category, just as important as capacitance. And this is definitely one that we're going to uh, be having a, a really uh, good look at here. And this is um, sort of like the rated voltage for the capacitors. And uh, th the way that this works is you can pick like a single voltage or you can just like select with your mouse like a range like that. And uh, I like to select ranges and uh, say for uh, like power supply caps, like in um, say like in the high voltage rails of a guitar amplifier, then we would probably be looking at 450 volt caps and up or maybe like 400 volt caps and up. So I'd select them all like that and then I hit apply all. And it would only show the results, like it would only show the caps on the screen that are within that range. And that's really useful for narrowing down results. So let's uh, just clear that for now. Um, ESR. Now, this is sort of like tolerance in a way, how I look at it. And this is sort of like um, something that you don't really have to pay too close of attention to. And it's really, really deep down the rabbit hole to talk about it. Um, it's sort of like the amount of leakage that happens in the in the capacitor because a capacitor, although it does block DC, 
voltage, it always lets like a little bit sort of squeeze through, you know, and at like certain frequencies as well too. And depending on the circuit that you are working on, that might be really important to know that information. But here's something that uh, I find is, um, is sort of like an inverse sort of a relationship, which is really cool, which is something you can pay attention to, is uh, the ESR is sort of inverse to the lifetime of a capacitor, meaning like the longer its lifetime, sometimes the longer the ESR or ESR is of it, or maybe it's the opposite of that. I, I just can't remember off the top of my head, but we'll, we'll notice that whenever we dig into this a little bit more. But uh, you'll find that like, you know, the, the better quality stuff um, sometimes has a little bit higher ESR, if I'm not mistaken, as, as something I noticed at least anyways. And generally you want to have like low ESR, like you want to have low amounts of resistance because that uh, basically will keep the heat of the uh, capacitor down and that means that it'll last longer sort of thing, you know? So what you want is to have really low ESR with really long lifetime, but that is like that's basically the crux of making capacitors. That's It's tough to do that sort of thing, you know, where they don't have any leakage, but they last a long time. So the longer they last, generally the more ESR they, they have sort of thing, you know? Um, that's sort of like, I look at it like with a car as like acceleration versus top speed sort of a thing. Do you know what I mean? Like where you can't have both, you, like you can try, but the but the more you engineer it, the, the closer you can get to having both really good acceleration and top speed. But generally it works like the more acceleration a car has, the lower its top speed is. Um, unless you have like gearing and transmissions and all that sort of stuff too. But anyways, okay, like we talked about that enough. Let's Let's move on. Um, lifetime, we kind of talked about that a bit here already, um, but basically this is how long you would expect the cap to last. And uh, I can just dig into some really good info here real quick on this, is uh, generally um, most like like caps that you would get from like say like like eBay or like like the really affordable cheap super ones that you buy in bulk for like a couple of bucks, they are like 2000 hours or less. And that's not really all that long when you think about it. Like if you're running, say like a piece of electronics, say like a router for, or like your Wi-Fi router and it runs like 24 seven. So like if it's running 24 hours a day, like that's really like, that's only like a hundred days. Do you know what I mean? Like it's less than a hundred days actually. Do you know, like that you can expect the capacitors to last in it. Like, and that's seriously the kind of caps that are in a lot of them they're only expected to last that long i mean a lot of the time they do last a lot longer but you know when you hear about how electronics have like planned failure and stuff like that like i don't know if i really like get behind like all of that sort of like that sort of stuff you know like i don't want to dig into that too much here but like but this is what they i think that they're talking about is like the caps in it like yeah like they could they could the manufacturers could put 2000 hour caps in a product or let's look down here you can buy caps that are like rated to last like 60,000 hours and like that's kind of ridiculous honestly most of the ones that are like are really good ones are like 10 to 12,000 hour caps and but you see the price is a big difference between 2000 hour caps and 12000 hour caps and remember, like I mentioned earlier, the ESR is very different between 2,000 hour caps and 12,000 hour caps. And that's also something very important to know as well too. And that means it's not necessarily always about budget and, and like for the bean counters and trying to save dollars, you know? It's sometimes it's about like trying to make the best circuit. And sometimes the best circuit means the lowest ESR. And sometimes that means lo using low, low hour uh, caps as well too. So, you know, all that sort of stuff is important to know. Um, but you know, I don't think you need to get hung up on it too much. Basically, whenever I, uh, here's like how you can look at it, you know, and, and I can summarize it is I, I just try to order like 10 to 12,000 hour caps because I know that like the only kind of caps that you can buy that are last longer than that are like a ridiculous amount of money more. And uh, I'm just not willing to spend that amount of money. And so I feel like, you know, this is about, this is like above average and this is about the best I can get. And the ESR is generally awesome for this, for what I'm working on, at least anyways, you know, like I'm not getting into there with super like crazy like circuits and stuff like that. You know, I'm generally working on like guitar amps and things. And, you know, I think that that's fine and dandy for what I'm working on. Okay. 
Uh, here's operating temperatures. This is sort of like the tolerance. Actually, I was talking about temperature here with tolerance, and this is actually what I was referring to. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit ahead of myself there, but that's what I was referring to is just the, these are the operating temperatures. And you'll find that, well, here's a piece of info here. You'll find that these lower average caps um, tend to be in the lower um, operating ranges or like the more narrow operating temperature ranges, like minus 20 to 85 degrees. And the longer life caps tend to have wider operating ranges, something like minus 40 to 105 or, or minus 20 to 125 or something like that is something that would be common. Okay, uh, polarization, that, that's a pretty interesting or a pretty good one to know whenever you're ordering caps because like when you're doing electrolytic capacitors, like nine times out of the 10, they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be, uh, what is it, polarized, meaning like they're gonna have like a positive and a negative side on them. Sometimes you you order uh, the other way, but like, but that is like very rare. So like 99% like of the time you're gonna get polarized ones, okay? Ratings, like, I don't even actually know what that means, so I'm just going to skip that one. <laughs> uh, applications. Uh, manufacturers of capacitors, they make capacitors designed for different applications, just like how, you know, like, like say, like, a pen maker would make pens for different things or markers for different things. Well, you can get caps that are already designed for different purposes, like audio and cars and things, because some of these, like, variables don't really matter for certain applications, you know, and then, so they wouldn't really worry about that, you know, and then that's uh, how you can help to narrow things down a bit more. Um, sometimes I'll use this category to narrow things down to audio if I want to get, like, um, caps that are in like a filtering circuit or something you know um, but most of the time I actually just sort of like skip this one or I'll actually pick general purpose because a lot of the time general purpose is just fine for um, like power supplies and guitar amplifiers uh, let's see here uh, ripple current oh yeah here we go yeah this is a big one right here this is like the ESR thing right here or maybe this is actually more the ESR thing but this is exactly or not the same thing but this is like related to it you know um, you know, the whole hours, the lifetime of the caps, you know, like the longer the lifetime, like the more ripple and leakage it's going to have. Yeah, well, this is what it's talking about right here. And it just is just like a different way of looking at it. Like it could have like 20 amps of leakage at 100 hertz, which would be like a massive amount. But it's probably more going to be like in this range, like in the in like the you know, like the 50 to like 400 milliamp range or something. And you can see it like at like a high frequency and low frequencies as well too, to see if you're going to have like any, uh, maybe this is not the right terminology for it, but like parasitic oscillations and things like that, you know? Um, yeah, because you don't want to have like a runaway amount of current. Um, say like if you are using the capacitor to like filter like some really high frequencies like in a filtering circuit, um, but it has like a ton of current, uh, say like at like a really high range, like, I don't know, something like, I don't know, like an amp or something at like 10 kilohertz, that would be bad because you could actually hear that, you know, that's within your hearing range. And, uh, um, so to filter that out, that would alter like the sound of the signal, you know, but if the runaway current wasn't, uh, but if it only happened at like 100 kilohertz, well, that's not so bad because you could like filter that out and it's like outside of the human hearing range, um, which caps out at 20 kilohertz. So that wouldn't be so bad, but, but yeah, anyways, that's just a little bit of stuff about that. Uh, let's dig into impedance here. Uh, this is like a really like in-depth one that's super techie. And we, I, I don't think that we really need to dig into that right now. You know, I know we already got into some super techie stuff, but I'm also not super good at explaining that either. So I'm just going to skip over it right now, honestly. Uh, lead spacing. This is important if you're ordering, like really important if you're ordering capacitors or any parts, for example, that are going to go into a, uh, circuit board because the holes have a certain spacing on it and you need to make sure that your parts are going to fit that spacing or else you have to like bend the legs and then they won't fit in correctly and it's like really messy and stuff. So this is really important to make sure that you get the lead spacing correct and make sure that you take care of that one for sure. Uh, size is kind of important if you're like, like not so much for guitar amplifiers because there's generally lots of space inside the cabinets. But like if you're ordering caps for like a guitar pedal, that would be very important because there's not a lot of space and you want to make sure that the caps you order are, are literally going to fit inside of the thing you're installing them inside of. 
And this is how you make sure of that. And this shows you like the diameter and the uh, and like the height or the length of the capacitor as well too. Um, this is right beside it. You can see the seated height of the capacitor as it's like when it's installed, how high it should stand off the top of the circuit board. Uh, okay, right beside that, the surface mount land size. Okay, so uh, I didn't mention this yet. I probably should have mentioned it a while ago, but this listing here lists uh, uh, both types of uh, capacitors, both um, surface mount type, which are basically just used in like modern electronics. And you're probably going to see in a lot of like, like smaller circuit boards, things like that, like, like surface mount of the really tiny parts that don't have little wire leads on them that are really hard to see and really hard to work with that you need really special stuff to work with. Uh, and the type that we, uh, typically use for tube amps are called through hole components. And, uh, and, and speaking of that, that's right over here, mounting type right over here. You can see through hole and you can see chassis mount. Um, that's also sort of like through hole, sort of like stuff that uses like wires and things like that. And surface mount is the kind that we don't want to use for tube amplifiers, but you, you could use actually, if you like bought them and then installed like wires or just like soldered things directly to them, they would actually still work. I'm the same thing. They're just in a different package and they're much smaller. And, um, yeah, uh, if you were ordering surface mount, you can actually see like the size of them and like, and the spacing of the leads and stuff here. Uh, yeah. And then package case, this is a, uh, an important one, like a really important one to know here, um, because this is going to tell you whether the leads on the capacitor, like if they come out, both of them come out the same side of the cap, or if they come, if one comes at one side and one comes out the other side. And, um, so the kind that uh, comes out, the leads, one comes out one side, like each side, kind of like what's inside of like uh, like an old Fender amplifier inside of like, you know, like when you lift up the, the shield that's over the caps and it has like the leads coming out of either side of the cap. Those are called axial caps, okay? And the other type where the leads both come out one side, those are radial caps. And usually radial caps are what you use on circuit boards and axial caps are what you use on, on like, like uh, point to point wiring and like through hole and stuff like that. But they are interchangeable and you don't have to use uh, radial for surf or for circuit boards and axial for, uh, for uh, point to point. You can totally interchange them and it's just fine. It just looks a little messy sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't look messy and sometimes it's fine. And sometimes that's all you can get as well too. Um, sometimes there's a big price difference between radial and axial caps. I find axial caps in general are more expensive than radial ones, uh, but not in all cases, but um, yeah. So sometimes I just use radials or actually quite often I use radials in place of axial caps and uh, it doesn't matter too much to me, but if I really want it to look right, then yeah, sometimes I'll spend the extra few bucks to get the axial caps and make it look just right. Whew. Okay. So that is like all the variables up there. That was a lot of information to cover. <laughs> I hope that that wasn't uh, uh, too overwhelming or anything. And I didn't talk too fast or anything, but I hope that that was uh, helpful. Uh, all of the variables right there. Um, now let's, uh, let's, let's pick some of these variables here and, uh, and dig right in a little bit more now. Okay. So let's start picking some of these variables and narrowing things down from 20,000 results to try to get to a more manageable number here. So let's, let's say, for example, you want to order some power supply caps for like, I don't know, like an old Fender tube amplifier. Like generally the capacitance for those amps is going to be like 22 or like 47 microfarads or sometimes 68 microfarads, but like, we'll just pick, I don't know, 22 for now, just to have one. Okay. So let's just select 22 and just ignore everything else for now. Um, but still make sure that we have in stock selected because we don't want to look at out of stock stuff unless we can't find anything in stock. Uh, but we'll start with the in stock stuff. Okay. So let's hit apply. Okay. Now we're already down to 867 results and this is a lot easier to manage already. You know, if we just scroll down here, um, we, it's, it's really a mishmash though. You know, we've got like the, the value that we want, like all of these, you can see are 22 microfarad, but we've got like all these different brands and like, and look, there's like tons of like 25 pages and it's like, we need to narrow it down a lot more here. Okay. 
So if we're uh, going to order power supply caps, then we know that we don't need to bother looking at like 16, or I mean, I mean, not power supply caps, like the high voltage rail caps. That's what we're looking for here. Okay. Sorry. I should have said that earlier. Um, like, and for that, we don't need to look at like 50 volt caps. We need to look at like really high voltage ones, like 450 and up. So let's select 450 and 500 and apply all. And look at that. Now we're down to 54 results. And this is way more manageable now. If we look at the variables, DigiKey's website will eliminate all the ones that like we don't need to bother looking at anymore. And now this is way easier to look at. You can see if we look over at mounting type, now there's only two different types over here. And so we only want to look at through hole because right now we're still seeing probably some, uh, yeah, see there's some surface mount stuff right over here. So we want to get rid of that. So let's just click on through hole and look now it's, well, it actually only got rid of three. How about that? Okay. So there we go. So now we know that every one of these caps that is showing on here is going to be 22 microfarads and rated for at least 450 volts. So basically any of these caps is probably going to work fine for uh, a high voltage rail and a Fender tube amplifier uh, or pretty much any tube amplifier, whether it's a radio or anything, because most of them don't really have a high voltage rail any higher than that. But you know, like that. But, but like take that with a grain of salt, of course, because <laughs> some of them do, <laughs> and they definitely need higher voltage rated caps. But anyways, uh, you need to make sure that you check the schematic to know what it needs, okay? Anyways, uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, so here's something else um, that I want to point out right now before we go any further. And uh, this is um, when we look at the pricing and the quantity and, uh, and the packaging, okay? Because some when you order some caps, like like most a lot of these you can order them just one but sometimes you can only order them in certain quantities like you can only order them in a minimum quantity of like a thousand or something um so for sometimes you might see a cap that is like say two dollars and 33 cents and then you might see like another listing for what looks like the same cap and it's like a way lower price like like half the, that price um but if you look at it and uh and usually it'll indicate somewhere in the price here um, or the quantity section. Um, I can't really see it here right there, but maybe that's one of them right there. But it usually um, will indicate that there's a minimum order quantity. So you got to keep an eye out for that to make sure that uh, you're not accidentally ordering like a thousand or something when you only wanted to order like 10 of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, probably the next thing I would look at uh, af after we select those things, because um, we don't like for like a high voltage rail and a point to point wired old fender tube amp. We don't really need to look at like size and lead spacing and, and, and we don't even really need to worry about ripple current just yet. You know, the things I want to probably narrow down next are the lifetime of the caps, because you can see there's some that are rated here for like a thousand hours and, and like, and like 2000 hours. And like, I bet that like, uh, let's see how many of these are, yeah, there's like 12 of these, you know, like it's like a quarter of the results are like, you know, these really low wattage or low average ones, actually even more than that, you know? Um, yeah, like half of them are low, uh, lifetime. So let's, let's go ahead and select 8,000 hours and up to 20,000 hours. And that's going to eliminate a lot more. So let's hit apply all. And so now we know now, now all the caps that are showing are not just like, like the right voltage in the right capacitance. Now they're like all really good quality as well too. And I know just from like previous like research that these are like reasonable prices as well too, to look at lifetime uh, expectancies of like the 10 to 12,000 hour range. And so let's have a closer look here now. And another benefit of narrowing it down like that with the mounting type, the lifetime capacitance, voltage, and uh, the stocking options here too is, um, stocking options is just showing the in-stock ones is uh that also eliminates a lot of the manufacturers so you can just see like the uh, really the ones that i kind of just recognize anyways and i typically order caps for high voltage rails power supplies like most based pretty much all of my electrolytic capacitors are always going to be uh, nichicon panasonic or rubicon hopefully i pronounce those names correctly uh, yeah, it's pretty much always going to be one of those three because I just, they're really well known, they're uh, respected, and uh, you know that you can trust that they're not going to be counterfeit if you order them from DigiKey as well too. 
um, they're generally always really uh, safe and trustworthy manufacturer uh, distributor to order your parts from. Yeah, so um, I'm not even going to bother picking manufacturer right now. I'm just going to leave them all up there because uh, Chemicon and Vishe make great caps uh, as well too. You know, um, I have no qualms with their products, and I don't see any need to narrow things down any more here. You know, I could look at the ripple currents here, and I could narrow these down to some really low ripple currents. Um, cause you can see, look, there's a pretty big range here, especially in these high frequency ripple currents. You can see the range available here is all the way from 184 milliamps all the way up to 940 am milliamps. That's almost a full amp at a hundred, at a hundred kilohertz though, you know, at really high frequencies, you know? So in fact, look at all, all of these are, oops, just clear that off. All of these are at really high frequencies, um, except for that one right there which is uh, at 10 kilohertz. And let's look over here look at the range. So not a big difference here, you know, 100, uh, for the low frequency ripple current, it's like 115 to 365. But uh, so let's, let's just see here, let's just clear those off. And let's just look at um, the listings that we have here and then what the sort of uh, differences are between these. So let's just sort them by price here by clicking on that arrow there. So now we'll see the lowest price ones here and then the price will go up as we scroll down. Okay. So for the lowest price ones that would do the job for like a 22 microfarad high voltage, uh, vo sort of vacuum tube amp sort of capacitor, uh, we would get this niche con right here and this would be a dandy cap right there. I bet. Okay. Let's see, have a look at it. Okay. So let's go across. They've got like over 1500 in stock and you can order them individually one at a time and they're two dollars and 33 cents canadian individually okay um so uh um, we'll click on that and look at it a little bit more further because generally if you order them in bulk like in like tens or 25s or 50s or hundreds or something you can actually get them for a lower price as well too we'll look more into that in a little bit here okay so uh so let's keep going and we see the lifetime expectancy of this is a hundred is 10,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. So you could expect the cap if it was operating at 105 degree, uh, in a 105 degrees Celsius environment, it would last for 10,000 hours, you know, and you know, give, give or take a little bit, uh, and you could expect it to operate, um, with, uh, uh, plus or minus, 20% tolerance of 22 uh, microfarads um, within this operating temperature range between minus 25 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius. You could expect it to operate like that um, for 10,000 hours within this temperature range. That's sort of how you look at that, okay? And you can see that this is a polarized cap, um, but all pretty much, I bet all of these are gonna be, yeah, they all are. Um, so we don't have to worry about it being non-polarized. Um, the ratings, don't worry about that. Applications, you can see, see most of these are general purpose that pop up anyways. Remember I mentioned that earlier and you can see that some of these will be meant for automotive. Um, but yeah, generally we just don't really have to worry about that one too much. Okay. And here's the ripple currents. Okay. So look, see, this is one of the cheap, this is the cheapest capacitor and this one has 365 milliamps of ripple current at its lowest frequency. And remember when we looked up at the variables, we can see that that's basically the worst one up here. And so you can see that that's like the, like, it, you know, I hate to put it this way, but the kind of like the crappiest <laughs> ripple current you can get. No, it's like basically it's the noisiest one. So when you install this, it's going to let the most 60 hertz noise through. It's going to be the noisiest capacitor that you can install, you know. And if you look at the high frequency ripple current, it's like it's crazy. It's 730 milliamps at 100 kilohertz. You definitely would want to like be filtering that uh, high frequency stuff out, you know, or making sure that it is filtered out. Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad, you know, uh, compared compare to some of these other caps, but the price is a big difference. Okay. As you'll see. Okay. So lead spacing height, you know, that, like I said earlier, you got to pay attention to that, but let's not worry about it for now. And you can see it's through hole and it's radial as well too. Okay. That's another important thing to note. Um, I'm not even sure if there is any axial caps on here. Uh, yeah, there might be some axials. Okay. So let's, let's go down the list. Okay. Let's look at something that's like a higher price point than that. I don't know. Let's look at, there's some Rubicons. Okay. So let's look at this, uh, the most affordable Rubicon option right here. Okay. So they got 10,000 of those in stock. It's only one penny more at 234. 
um, all that same stuff there, same lifetime, little bit better operating temperature range that can handle the lower temperatures a little bit more. So for one penny more, you can get a cap that is rated down to minus 40. And that's important, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to spend an extra penny for that. And, um, and it's interesting to think though, like how manufacturers, like on the scale of manufacturing though, when you're making something like, and you're making like 10,000 or a hundred thousand of something, yeah, that penny really matters, you know? Like that's gonna be like the difference of like thousands and thousands of dollars, that penny. So yeah, and if you know your product is never going to be used at minus 35 degrees Celsius, then you'll probably opt to save that penny, you know? And I think that's interesting to just think about stuff like that, you know? Anyways, uh, yeah, so ripple current, way, way better here, you know, only 280 milliamps um, at 120 hertz and a little bit better at the high frequencies here at 700 milliamps. Uh, okay, let's go over here a little bit more. And you can see that's another radial one right there too, but we could also just kind of see that from the picture as well. But you don't want to always rely on the picture. You want to make sure that you read it in the specifications is for sure, okay? Uh, so let's, let's dig down and let's look for something else different here, okay? Let's look for something like way more expensive, like $4. Look at this United Chemicon. Let's check this guy out. Okay, here. Okay, 951 in stock. You can order individually. It's $4 and it's active. So it's current. And look at this. It's rated for 500 volts. So that's way better. Okay, so it can handle any uh, transient voltage spikes above 450. But look at that. It's only rated for 8,000 hours. Even though it's $4, only rated at 8,000 hours. And its operating temperature range is lower than that Rubicon. It's minus 25 to 105. Interesting, eh? And this is meant for automotive purposes. Interesting. Okay, interesting. So why is that? So let's keep looking here. And you can see that it's got pretty good uh, ripple current here, 230, but not like an enormous amount better than the Rubicon one. Um, and it's got like a, a bit better high uh, frequency ripple current as well too, okay? Um, and it's through hole and it's radial. So you know what? That's not really that much better than the Rubicon one, um, which I think is probably the best all arounder unless you're ordering like, like, like a, an enormous amount of them, you know? So I'd probably stick with the Rubicon over that United, uh, uh, or the, over, the, over this Chemicon, unless I really needed that voltage, you know? So let's, let's keep going up here in price and let's look for something else more interesting. Let's look at, um, okay, let's look at the most expensive radial one we can get here, which is this Nichicon, okay? So this one, you can order it individually. They only got 219 in stock there, which means they, they, they either sold a lot of them or they don't sell a lot of them. <laughs> so there you go. It's a plus or minus 20%. Like I think all of these are plus or minus 20% tolerance, except for, except for the axials, which have a uh, much lower tolerance, uh, much or much worse tolerance, I should say. Okay. Let's keep looking at the, um, uh, uh, at this really nice radial from Nichicon here. So that's a 500 volt Nichicon right there. This is some serious stuff. And you can see this is the UCY series, you know, none of this, none of this UCS junk down here. <laughs> okay. This is the serious UCY stuff here, right? And uh, look at this one. This is a 10,000 hour capacitor right here uh, for 105 degrees Celsius minus 40 to 105 Oh yeah, it's got that wide operating temperature range. Now keep in mind though, this is a $5.30 capacitor. Like this is more than twice as expensive as the, that Rubicon we looked at earlier, you know? And uh, and its operating lifetime is not as good uh, as these more inexpensive ones. Uh, nope, it's not as good. And it's only 10,000 hours versus 12,000 hours, but it does have the higher voltage range. And that is really important sometimes, especially for like some oscilloscopes things. Okay, but let's, uh, oh yeah, let's not forget which one. We're looking at this row right here. Okay, the third one up. Okay, now let's look at this ripple. This is where it gets awesome. Okay, so for the ripple on this one, it's only 280 milliamps. Uh, and that's, you know what, that's actually not that much better than the, uh, or that much different, I should say, than the Rubicon. It's negligible, the difference, I would say. But the high free, high uh, frequency ripple is, is, is not negligible. Like, that's pretty noticeable. That's like 200 milliamps. That's a pretty big difference right there, you know. But also, if you're just going to filter it out, you know, like, is, does it, how important is it? 
but uh, you know, 568 milliamps is easier to filter out than like seven or 800 milliamps. So that's important. Um, lead spacing, stuff like that. You want to pay attention to that because generally the higher voltage something is, the bigger it's going to be as well too. Just keep that in mind. And yeah, of course it's still radial. So yeah, let's look at these axial ones here and you'll notice that like, yeah, there wasn't a lot of them available, at least not for these uh, operating temperatures and lifetimes, you know, there would be more available if we looked at the 2000 hour range ones, but I don't want to, I just want to look at these nice higher range ones because it really, it helps narrow things down a bit more. And I feel for the price that they're, uh, they are somewhat affordable, I guess not. These axial ones are expensive though. Like look at these vishes. Okay. So like this one, which is the affordable one, um, is uh, 329 in the stock. You can order one for $9.73 Canadian each. That is expensive, I find. Wow, that's a lot of money. Wow. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that like DigiKey is like more expensive than like other manufacturers. In fact, I find DigiKey has fantastic pricing all around, but it's just, I find like for me, that's a lot of money to spend on a capacitor. Wow. But, uh, but these are decent caps, you know? Okay, let's keep looking. Okay, so... The tolerance on these, look at this. So, you know, you could expect them um, like uh, like to be like they're, this is a better tolerance like on the underside of 22. So you could expect it to be within 10% uh, on the low side of 22 uh, microfarads, but like, but as high as 50% over. But that's not really that bad of a thing because generally if a cap has like, like more capacitance that's not really a bad thing it's like when it has less capacitance than you want that's like a bad thing you know and so this is although it might not look like a good thing to have that wider range um and 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 having a wider range is not really a good thing for some reasons but like for capacitors it's actually not that bad of a of a thing to have uh, more capacitance than it's supposed to have because that kind of just means that it's going to like do a better job than it was supposed to do anyways that's cool Okay, so uh, yeah, these are rated for 450 volts and you'll notice that these radial Nichicom ones, which are like almost half the price, were a higher voltage cap as well too. Interesting. Okay, um, both rated for 10,000 hours, uh, both polarized. However, look at this axial one, the temperature range for this. Now, I feel that that is significant, uh, especially because not so much the low temperature because, you know, like... Like I'm not often playing gigs at like minus 30 degrees Celsius, you know, uh, but my, and although I might not be playing gigs at like 90 degrees Celsius, the inside of my amplifier might hit those temperatures, might hit those temperatures and it might hit those temperatures very often. Uh, so I feel like that is very important to have uh, really like to have caps that go though that extra range to the 105 and you'll see axial caps like these, even these expensive ones only go to 85 degrees. And I think that that's important to note. Okay, but let's keep going here, okay? Because this is more, there's more important stuff to note here. Like the ripple current is, is honestly, that's great. 240 milliamps. Like that's, that's, I think that might be like the best out of everything on the list here. Uh, is it? It's, well, it's not. 115 was. I'm not sure which one was the 115. Which one was that? Anyways, uh. I don't know, it's just one of the random ones in the middle. But anyways, it is really, really low, though. So that's pretty good. You know, I'll give it a, a, a gold star for that. Uh, yeah, there is an impedance to it. So I think that you would need to, to keep that in mind. Um, but I'm not, like I said, like that's something I'm, I'm not super clear on. So I'm not really super going to dig into that. But I think that it's probably an important thing to know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah, um, I think for like high voltage rail is probably not super important to know for that. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments so that everybody else knows as well, too. Uh, yeah. And you can just see it's through hole and axial, of course, over here as well. And the uh, size and the dimensions of it. So yeah, that's a look at the, the list of caps here. Now let's just click on this one here because I want to look at the, uh, the information that you can see whenever you click right on one. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so now we're, we're, really, we're really far down the rabbit hole here now. Okay, so if you were gonna, or if we were gonna order these 22 microfarad, 450 volt caps for our high voltage rails of our, of our tube amplifier, then uh, we would want to know, like, well, 
well, how many of these do we want to get, you know? Uh, so uh, you might want to order just a couple of them, but depending on how many of them you're going to order or how often you're going to use them, you might want to just order them in bulk. And, you know, for example, this cap right here, like if you didn't want to spend a lot of money, but you still wanted to get a, a decent quality cap, this is the one right here I would recommend you order. Uh, or maybe have a peruse at a few of the other ones similar to this, but like something like this, you know, or like the Rubicon one, which was, I think, $2.34, like is, would be great. You know, they got lots of them in stock. It's a great price and it'll last a long time and it'll work just fine, you know? And, uh, but you see something like this, especially a 22 microfarad, like I recommend you just order a bunch of these ones, like probably order, like if you can get, like if you can go as far as like 50 or a hundred of them, like, especially if you order a hundred of them, you can get them for like almost half the price. And the thing is you're going to use these like all the time, especially a 22 microfarad, because say like if your high voltage rail calls for like a 47, or like a 68, you can just like stack a few of these up on top of it, like together, like in, I know you're not really supposed to do this all the time. It's not the best way, but in some cases you can like put them in parallel, you know, and then you can get to that capacitance that you need. And that's why I think that ordering 22s are really, really useful. Or maybe like just order like maybe 50 of these and get like 50 that are like 47 microfarad or 68s or something like that as well too. But yeah, you know, it's, I think it's important to just uh, mention that you can order these in bulk quantities and get a pretty significant uh, discount on the price. And uh, for some of the caps you're ordering, you really, really might want to order them in bulk, like 100, especially something like a 22 microfarad. But, you know, I would recommend like the lower value capacitance caps are the ones you would probably want to high order in higher uh, quantities because you can like stack them in like inside of circuits in parallel to get to those higher capacitances. Um, but you generally don't want to order like a whole bunch of like really high <laughs> capacitance caps because you can't like, well, you, you could run them in series, but that would be kind of, we, I don't know that I feel like that would be weird to use like m more expensive caps than you need to get to like lower capacity. Like that would just be weird. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it would make more sense to do it the other way. Anyways, yeah, so that's like a closer look at the pricing on this screen. I'm not going to get too much more into this information here because this is basically the same information that we saw on the previous screen. Um, but what else you might want to look at here is the data sheet. Like you can click on that and then um, yeah, this is the data sheet directly from the manufacturer. Let's just zoom right in here. And this gives you like the official information um, right from... Uh, Nichicon, and then they say right here, yeah, this is a cap that's rated for like 8,000 to 10,000 hours, and they give you way more information on here than you can get off the DigiKey website, and this is way more than I'm going to get into right now, but there is some really uh, nifty information in here, uh, and if you have any curiosities about uh, your caps, then this is where you are going to find uh, all the information out to, uh, to quell your curiosities. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, you know, I think that that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to cover today in this video about how to order capacitors. If you have any thoughts or questions, then you can leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, then please, you can hit the like button and you can subscribe to the Mirrors Lab channel for more as well, too. I really appreciate you watching, folks, and I'll catch you next time.